In this third lecture on Fourier series, I'm going to look at Parseval's theorem, the decibel, dynamic range, and bandwidth. Parseval's theorem is shown here. It's shown in the time domain. It's shown in the frequency domain for the rectangular Fourier series coefficients, and it's shown in the frequency domain for the complex exponential Fourier series coefficients. The idea of Parseval's theorem is that you can work out the power by either using the time domain signal or any of the frequency domain signals. So again, the power may be calculated from either the time domain or the frequency domain. Consider f of t having units of volts and applied to a 1 ohm resistor. Then you would just use you know, v squared over r to, to get the power. And this is why, to find the power in the time domain, you would take the voltage squared, which gives you the power. And if you um, multiply by time, that would give you the total energy averaged over one period divided by time gives you the power back. And if we integrate that for our square wave example, or this uh, this one here, we get 1. And I said C equation 13, page 13, here. Equation 13, page 13. In the frequency domain for that example, Previously, we had worked out in lectures 1 and 2 of the Fourier series the, those A and B coefficients. For the A, uh, A0 and A coefficients, the DC and the cosine coefficients, those are 0. The sine coefficients are not 0, but you have only the odd coefficient. This was B1, B3, B5. Um, those coefficients, and so on and so on, and those coefficients are put in here. If we go back briefly to see where those coefficients were f first presented for the rectangular form of Fourier series, it was on, we had worked it out and we got these coefficients, the A's and the B coefficients. And it's these th that are being evaluated in Parseval's theorem. Right, so we need to work out this series to show that this is going to be equal 1. Well, <laughs> you can see what I've done here, but I'll explain. So if we, just repeating what's on the previous page, if we evaluate that series, the A0, A0, 0, AN0, the BN coefficients are, um, uh, well, if I, I'm going to flip back. The first one is, um, 16 over 2, which is 8, and there's a pi squared in the denominator, and 16 over 2 is 8 pi squared in the denominator. Then 1 over 3 squared is here, 1 over 5 squared is here, and so on. So it's 8 over pi squared, 1 plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 5 squared, and so on. And that's here, 1 over 3 squared, 1 over 5 squared, and is 8 divided by pi squared. And so continue, just showing more terms in that series, it would be 1 over 1 plus 1 over 9 plus 1 over 25 plus 1 over 49 plus 1 over 81 and so on. Now I've just evaluated this with a calculator to get these numbers and added them up to get 1.189 and multiplied by 8 pi squared over 2 and you get 0 0.9596. The more terms you would add here, the closer you would get to 1. This is not a mathematical proof. I'm trying to demonstrate that Parseval's theorem gives you one in the time domain and gives you one in the frequency domain. And what's interesting about this is that it would be less writing to, to prove Parseval's theorem than to evaluate the series on this page. There's a, a small proof of Parseval's theorem, just using the definitions of the Fourier series. And then if the Parseval's theorem is true, then you ha this has to be 1 because we've worked it out in the time domain and it has to be 1. 
But the point is that one is obtained from both the time domain and the frequency domain. All right, something else we'll need. The decibel, dB. It's defined to be a ratio of powers. Rp is 10 log and base 10 of p1 over p0. And what powers might this be? Well, I have two circuits shown here. They each have a resistor R. In one circuit, there's a voltage V0 applied. In the other circuit, there's V1 applied. And so by Ohm's law, V0 is I0R in this circuit, and V1 is I1R in this circuit. And the power dissipated, the DC power dissipated in R would be V0 squared divided by R. It would also be I0 squared R, but I, I'm just using the V0. And similarly, P1 is V1 squared divided by R. So if we put replace P1 by V1 squared over R, P1 is V1 squared over R, and we place, replace P0 by V0 squared over R, the R's cancel, we're left with V1 over V0 squared, but that squared can be brought outside, brought down in front of the log, and you can get 20 log in base 10 V1 over V0. And because V1 is I1R1 and V0 is I0R, excuse me, I1R and I0R, then you can replace that by I1R and I0R, and the R's cancel, and we're left with I1 over I0. So dB, or decibel, is the ratio of powers in dB. And if you take a ratio of powers, then you evaluate the log with a 2. If you take a ratio of amplitudes, voltage or current, you put a 20 in front. And an example I've given here is, f for example, suppose P1 were equal to 1000 P0. Then if we put that into this formula, then P1 is 1000 P0, the P0s cancel, we're left with 10 log and base 10 of 1000, which would be 30. And the units are dB. This is saying P1 is 30 dB larger than P0. You might be used to saying P1 is 1000 times bigger than P0, but when you start to work with extremes and numbers, very large and very small numbers, then the decibel compresses the dynamic range. For example, another measure of, um, another conversion is when P0 is a reference power, 1 milliwatt. If P0 is 1 milliwatt, or 10 to the minus 3 watts, then the power of a signal in dBm is 10 log and base 10 of P over P0. And so if we put P0 in watts equal to 1000, we put a thousand in here, which is 10 to the 3, divided by 10 to the minus 3 would give you 10 to the 6, which would give you 60 dBm. So 1000 watts, or 1 kilowatt, is equivalent to 60 dBm. If we put 1 in here, 1 over 10 to the minus 3 would be 10 to the 3. The log and base 10 of 10 to the 3 is 3, times 10 is th um, 30. So if P0 is 1 watt, that corresponds to 30 dBm. If P0 is 10 to the minus 3 watts, or 1 milliwatt, it's the same as P1, P is the same as P0. So the ratio is 1, the log and base 10 of 1 is 0, times 10 is 0. So a power in watts of 10 to the minus 3 is 0 dBm. If we put in a power of 10 to the minus 13, which is the type of power levels you can get with radio signals, then if we put 10 to the minus 13 in here, divided by 10 to the minus 3, it's going to give us 10 to the minus 10, and when we work that out, we'll get minus 100. So dB is used because it just compresses this dynamic range. You can talk about the power levels between 60 dBm and minus 100 dBm, and they're just easier numbers to work with than this. There's another reason why dB is relevant. Um, just some other things. <laughs> 10 log and base 10 of 2 is, to this many significant digits, 3.01029995 dB. Meaning if P0 
<clears throat> P1 over P0 were a ratio of 2, P1 would be 3 to be bigger than P0. So a, a doubling of power corresponds to this many dB, but because we often work with three significant digits, that's equivalent to 3.01, so we often write that a doubling of power corresponds to 3 dB. If you double, if you make a, the power twice as big, you double the power, it corresponds to a 3 dB increase. Double the power is a 3 dB increase. And one other, one other comment, for voltages and currents, if, if one voltage, if V1 was higher than V0, and the ratio was root 2 over 1, meaning if V1 were about 1.414 volts and V0 were 1 volt, then the ratio is 3 dB. So with voltages, because you have a 20 in front, there's a, the ratio is only 1.414 over 1. And that's again approximately 3 dB. All right, and so another reason why uh, decibels are useful is because people, uh, the, they are, they're sent their, their eyes and their ears are sensitive to light and sound, but on a logarithmic scale, meaning with the example of sound, you can hear very loud sounds and you can hear very quiet sounds. And so this is going to be an audio recording, it's not a lecture, <clears throat> so I may not have the same dynamic range that I'm used to in a lecture. So what I'm going to try and do is speak a little louder here, and this is, call this a 0 dB reference. I am speaking at a 0 dB amplitude level. Now if I change and lower the power in my voice by about minus 3 dB, perhaps it would be about like the following. This would be about minus 3 dB lower. I'm trying to be 3 dB lower than the original reference. You can hear it because you were listening to me, but if you had gone out of the room and come back, you might not have been able to hear the difference. So if 0 dB is here, then if I were to start speaking at minus 10 dB, then min minus 10 dB is about like this. I'm, I'm trying to make it minus 10 dB but you know it's it's harder if I switch to minus 20 dB I think minus 20 dB in amplitude is about like this it's a little quieter you can still hear what I'm saying and so on and so on I might try minus 30 like this um, minus 30 might be an amplitude level like this you can maybe hear me, you might want to turn up the amplitude to try and hear me, but I think this is minus 30 dB, approximately. So I will return to near 0 dB reference again to continue with this lecture, but what's I've got two things that I'm going to talk about in more detail later, but I want to give you an idea of that right here. A landline telephone, not a cell phone, like a payphone, has approximately a 48 dB dynamic range, meaning the difference between the loudest sound and the quietest sound you could perceive on a landline telephone would be about 48 dB difference. Telephone, landline telephones are pretty good. You can hear a lot of stuff in the background. There, you know, there's, you can hear low level sounds. Compact disc audio. I don't mean MP3 files, I mean compact disc audio has a 96 dB dynamic range. So maybe, because I put negative numbers here, really, I started with 0 dB and minus 3 dB and minus 10 and so on. Maybe for this example I should have just drew a line here and stopped it and just said, in a telephone there's a 48 dB dynamic range from 0 dB to minus 48. And for compact disc audio, it's 0 dB to minus 96 dB. Minus 96 dB is astonishingly weak compared to 0 dB. If I were in the class in front of you, all I would be doing is moving my lips and you couldn't hear any sound. So these, um, this is a demonstration of dynamic range. Okay. In terms of power in the frequency domain, 
Parseval's theorem for the square wave example was shown here. We evaluated that a0 squared plus 1 half, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, a n squared plus b n squared, and uh, we get b n squared, and the a coefficients are 0, and we work it out like this. The, so we got a half, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, 4 over pi squared, 4 over 3 pi squared, 4 over 5 pi squared, and so on. <coughs> And the sum of those has to be 1, because it has to equal the time domain for this square wave example. The relative power in F1 and F3 would be 1 half B1 squared plus B3 squared. That's B1 squared. That's B3 squared. The 1 kilohertz and the 3 kilohertz. Divided by 1 times 100%. And when we work out the numbers, we get 90.1%. Meaning 90.1% of the power of that signal is in the 1 kilohertz component and the 3 kilohertz component. Relative power in uh, f to 7f up to the 7 kilohertz component would be 96%. 96% of the signal power is between 1 kilohertz and up to an including 7 kilohertz. The relative power in f to 41f is 99%. So you can see there's a lot of energy in the tails, meaning the tails meaning 41, 42, 43. You'd, you'd have to go quite a rain, quite a ways out. Part of it is because the series only decays, the amplitudes only decay, well, my, the powers decay as 1 over sigma, 1 over, the powers decay as 1 over n squared. You have a 1 over 1 squared, a 1 over, a 1 over 3 squared, a 1 over 5 squared, so they do decay by a square but it still takes a while. Now, in this example, one would one could say for f for a frequency of 1 kilohertz of the fundamental of the square wave, one could say that the bandwidth with 90% of the power is 3 kilohertz. Meaning we, in the first two harm in the 1 kilohertz and the 3 kilohertz we capture 90% of the power. But there are other definitions of bandwidth. For the frequent, this is why I was pursuing Fourier series. Um, this one, well, um, to give you some insight into the frequency domain. So frequency domain square wave example, but in decibels. So if I plot the magnitude, 20 log and base 10 of the amplitude b n over b1, where b1 is the reference. So this is a dB ratio between b n and b1. So for frequency index of n equals 1, you'd have b1 over b1. That would just be log of 1, which is 0, and we'd have 0 dB. That's the reference point. <coughs> if we were to put b3 in here and do the calculation, that was done here. 20 log and base 10 of b3 over b1 is 20 log and base 10 of 4 over 3 pi divided by 4 over pi, which is 20 log and base 10 of a third, which is minus 9.54 dB meaning, and it was, it's an amplitude, so we put a 20 in front, and it's saying that B3 is 9.54 dB weaker than B1. And that's shown here. B3 is the 3 kilohertz component. It's 9.54 dB weaker than B1. Now, there's another definition. One could say the 3 dB bandwidth of a square wave is 1.6 kilohertz or 1.5 kilohertz for t equals 1 millisecond f and f equals 1 kilohertz. Just by interpolating this graph. We know this point is correct, 0 dB. We know this point is correct. Turns out it's a, a line here. But just interpolating, because the 3 dB amplitude, or uh, 3 dB p corresponds to a decrease in power by a half. It's always an interesting one, and it's commonly used. So the 3 dB bandwidth might be around 1.6 kilohertz, 1.5 kilohertz. It's something like that. Now, it's also a stretch in that normally when you f express a 3 dB bandwidth, you're working with a continuum of signals here, but <coughs> 
I've only defined the Fourier series to try and get some access and to try and describe the frequency domain. There are other more complicated ways of looking at the signals where you get a continuum of frequencies. And so it, it's probably unusual to find a 3 dB bandwidth expressed for Fourier series. I don't think I could find a book that would do that. But I'm trying to give you some insight into what this definition of bandwidth is. And I've also shown this here. I did a plot in GNU Octave or um, MATLAB of the amplitude of the sine Bn versus the frequency domain coefficient. So you can see the, the 1.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.3. This is 4 over pi, 4 over 3 pi, 4 over 5 pi, and so on. And it's the frequency domain coefficient, n equals 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 1 kilohertz, 3, um, 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz. But this is a linear linear scale, meaning linear here, linear here. Whereas this is a log scale, actually it's log log scale, because dB is a log measure and then the frequency domain is a log measure. If you can see this, pardon me, 10 to the 0 is 1 kilohertz. Uh, this is 10 to the 10, this is 10 kilohertz, so it's a log scale, meaning 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, 3, 4, 5, 6, actually that's not 10 to the 10, sorry. It's 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And so 1 kilohertz is here, 2 kilohertz is here, 1.6 kilohertz is around here, and there's the 3 dB bandwidth. So again, it's trying to demonstrate bandwidth with only the Fourier series. Thank you.